Alright, so before we begin, I'm going to have to make a few disclaimers here. This video will contain a lot of MBTI terminology that you don't really need to understand yet. It's just so that I can critique Vox for using certain arguments that don't really hold. Um, also, if you want to play a nice drinking game whilst watching this video, I can recommend the cognitive function game. Every time I say cognitive function, you take a sip of alcohol or an entire shot, I don't care. I can guarantee you by the end of this video, you and your friends will be absolutely wasted. So without further ado, let's get into it. This video is by Vox, like I've already said, and they are going to critique the MBTI theory for being useless because, well, multiple reasons. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so there's a 93 question test called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. You've probably heard of it. It's the most widely used personality test in the world. Okay, I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but right from the start, they used Tumblr as a source. I mean, no offense, but it isn't very reliable. Second of all, they say that this test has 93 questions. They just pulled that out of the air. There's this one version of the test that they did, apparently. It's the one, the official one. Uh, on the MBTI website, which is not the only one out there, actually is one of the worst I have heard. So just do your research, please. Don't just take the first one you see. The most definitive personality test of them all is the Myers-Briggs. And the company that makes it, CPP, reportedly earns about $20 million from the 2 million people that take it and the companies that administer it every single year the companies that administer it. You actually, later on in the video, start to explain who made the test, and it wasn't this company. They just adapted it and took it. It's like saying that Shakespeare is a bad playwright just because somebody made a bad adaptation of his play. That's not how it works. Also, they make a lot of money. Well, good for them. It's a company, that's what they do. They're supposed to make a lot of money, and there are many versions of this test out there that are actually free. So just do those ones, they're better anyway. So you take this test, you answer these 93 questions and it tells you you're one of 16 different personality types. The, the only problem is that this test is completely meaningless. Well, to quote a famous man, Absolutely wrong. Proof. Clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, anyone working to understand human behavior who doesn't have a stake in the financial success of this test doesn't actually even believe in it. Hmm. Yeah, those are great statistics. So 100% of all psychologists and psychiatrists working to understand human behavior who don't have the stake in the success of this test don't believe in it. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. But these articles, I've looked most of them up, they never reference, get your vodka ready, the cognitive functions, nor the shadow functions related to those cognitive functions. Nor do they acknowledge the fact that there's also a side of the Myers-Briggs type indicator that doesn't revolve around horoscopic nonsense that is supposed to make you feel good about yourself. There is a dark side of MBTI that only shows up if you actually look deeper than Tumblr posts, believe it or not. So let's step back a little. In 1921, uh, Carl Jung, an enormously influential early psychologist, hypothesized that humans fall into a number of different types. There are perceivers and judgers, people who prefer sensing over intuition. There are thinkers and there are feelers. Uh, but even at the time, he realized that most people didn't fit neatly into one category or another. He wrote, Every individual is an exception to the rule. Boom. You have already explained why you mistreat the theory. Every individual is unique and should be treated as such. No. Not everyone fits neatly into a category, but that doesn't mean the theory doesn't work. The thing about cognitive function is that it explains this problem. Everybody has introverted and extroverted functions. It is your dominant function that determines if you are an introvert or an extrovert, but that doesn't mean you can't behave like the other. It's uh, This is explained in the functions because your second function is always opposite in its extroversion or introversion, meaning that your second most used cognitive function is always opposite in its introversion or extroversion to your dominant function. Following? No? Well, I don't think these people did either, nor did the scientists who didn't believe in it because none of the articles mention cognitive functions. So then, a few decades later, a pair of Americans who had no formal training in psychology, Catherine Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers, Ooh, they had no formal training in psychology. 
just like how Charles Darwin didn't have formal training in evolution and Thomas Edison didn't have formal training in anything. I mean, there are plenty of examples of ordinary people who discover incredible things that are of great importance. I mean, for example, Gregor Mendel, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm not German, he worked in a monastery and was screwing around with beans in the gardens, and at some point he realised that the beans he planted carry on some of the same traits to new bean plants. Oh, this bean is just as big as daddy bean. Oh no, this bean is just as green as mommy bean. And nobody believed that this was real, so they called bullshit on him. But years later we confirmed the existence of genes and the whole DNA mumbo jumbo, which our buddy Mendel was already experimenting with. So, I mean, I rest my case on the formal training part of this bloody argument. Decided to take these ideas and turn them into what they called a type indicator. Around 1945, they first began testing it. They took Young's types but slightly altered the terminology and changed it so that every single person was assigned only one possibility or another. You couldn't be a little bit of an extrovert or a little bit of an introvert. Okay, sure. This makes it sound as if it's absolutely impossible to be a little bit introverted when you have been assigned the letter E. This is, however, not the case, because many tests, for example the 16personalities.com one, show you the percentage of which letter you have been assigned, and it is theoretically possible to achieve a 50-50 score on each letter, but no normal person ever does, because these two things are each other's opposites. Someone who is introvert can still love parties, and an extrovert can still prefer to stay at home as Crudo's loud alcoholic shit shows. Also, I mean, it's probably starting to get annoying by now, but at least you've got your vodka, because you have cognitive functions that explain how this works. Some people may feel constantly uncomfortable in their current environment, which lets them use a different cognitive function as their dominant one instead of the one that they're supposed to use. So even in the logic of this theory, it can be explained why someone is an extrovert and barely ever wants to talk to people. Also. Some of those tests are really horrible at asking questions. I haven't done the paid one they reference in this video, but the one on 16personalities.com seems to be pretty good. I only ever met one person that got a different result after retaking the test a few months later, and this person already had a very close, almost 50-50-ish score the first time on one letter, which was exactly the one that differed the second time. After looking into, here they are again, cognitive functions, drink up lads, <sighs> We determined their type by arranging the functions in the correct order to determine what type they were and how it could be explained that they got different results the second time. It also had to do with the way this person answered the questions. If they ask you, do you like to hang out with friends? Someone may answer no on a bad day and yes on a good day. You're supposed to answer what would apply to you when you're in your happy normal self. And after explaining this to people, most websites are shit at this, they never get a different type ever again. But people don't actually work that way, so the results simply aren't reliable. One study found that as much as 50% of people who took the test twice arrived at different results, even though it was only five weeks later. Well, that just means that it's a bad test. Most tests that test how your personality works give you the same result over and over again, otherwise it's a bad test. And even if it differs, like I've already explained, it's usually very explainable, like you answer questions in a certain way that you're not supposed to. And a reported 89 of the Fortune 100 companies and 200 federal agencies use the test to separate employees and potential hires into types and assign them appropriate training programs and responsibilities. But multiple studies have shown that the test totally fails to predict people's success in various jobs. If you are a naturally good leader type, like an INTJ or an ENTJ, it doesn't mean that you're automatically good at leading people. It's like expecting people that are good with languages to speak six languages on their first try. Things take practice and time to master. This especially is true for certain types like the INTJ. They need to screw up a few times before they get a feel for the thing they're trying to achieve and can make use of their natural talent, so to speak. And we also don't know how these companies decided which types were combined with which types. Maybe they made a random list of certain types they thought would be needed in a group and just shoved them together randomly. Sometimes people just don't work well together and their personality is not always to blame. 
Let's say, for example, that Danny and Terence are in a group, and Terence had sex with Danny's girlfriend. They may not be open for proper teamwork, even though their types say so. These sort of systems need to be used to try stuff out, not to force people into good teams, because that's not how good teams work. Maybe you just don't like someone. Maybe someone is just shit at something. I mean, just think stuff through. Don't force things through. The really strange thing is that there are leading psychologists on their board and none of them use the test in their personal research. You know, in 2012, Carl Thorson, a Stanford psychologist and board member of CPP, admitted that it would be questioned by his academic colleagues if he actually used the Myers-Briggs in his research. Okay, yeah. Even though I didn't want to address this point, they are very inconsistent with their logic because in the beginning of the video, it is said that people with no financial connection to this theory didn't believe in it, so it was bullshit. And now this guy doesn't use it because he believes that his colleagues would question it, and that is for some reason a good argument for why it's not a work in theory? I mean, if he would use this in his research, wouldn't that also exclude him from their logic? Because, well, sure, he has financial connections to theory, so obviously he'll use the test, and this... Uh, I mean, there's no winning for this guy, he's, he's just screwed. Wait, why is the Myers-Briggs so popular? Well, it really only gives positive results, and it plays into the idea of people fitting neatly into categories. Well, yeah, but not really. I mean, the websites, they give you positive results and don't describe your bad sides or weaknesses, but they are there, believe me. I already mentioned the darker side of MBTI, which only appears in the... Oh, fuck. I, I ran out of vodka, but... In the cognitive functions. They have bad sides, they give you negative traits that you also have to live with in your type and that you can actually work on to improve. Um, but I mean, they don't mention it in on the websites. I mean, that's a weakness that I have to admit is there. I mean, don't 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 read your type when you're on the website and done the test. Just just ignore that, please. People love categories. You can't take the test and be told that you're selfish or lazy or mean. Uh, the results are always positive. Because the descriptions are vague, they're hard to argue with. This is called the Forer Effect, and is a technique long used by purveyors of astrology, fortune telling, and other sorts of pseudoscience. Ooh, nice sneaky association you threw in there. Astrology is complete, absolute nonsense, entirely made up based around something that has no logic behind it at all, at least have the decency to associate it with I don't know, Hogwarts houses or some shit. At least that has, has set rules. We all know astrology is bullshit because multiple reasons. Some being that actual astrologists already confessed that they made shit up. If you ever see astrology and MBTI on the same page, just click away, please. This happens on Tumblr a lot. Just don't go there. Please. Thank you. Fucking hell. To persuade people they have accurate information about them. There's something really attractive about assigning ourselves different personalities. This is why horoscopes are so popular. This is why we like, love taking BuzzFeed quizzes. But the truth is that human personalities are really complicated. <laughs> I love how they mention complicated when they only look at the basics of the theory, explain it very vaguely and very basically without mentioning the... F I'm not gonna say it. I'm, I'm not gonna say it now. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking the test as a fun activity, but it's important to remember, the Myers-Briggs is useful for one thing, entertainment. Yes, entertainment and the understanding of other people, personal growth, that sort of stuff. I mean, I will talk about that in other videos, which I will be making. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This was the entire video. This was all the arguments they had. Uh, and this is also usually all the arguments you see on those websites that say that Myers-Briggs is totally meaningless. Also, I have no reason to uh, promote Myers-Briggs. I just think it's a very interesting theory. They don't pay me at all. I don't even know this. the original website. Never took the test anything. Just did the free ones. I really, truly believe in this theory. If you use the cognitive functions, which barely any of these articles, websites people that critique it use so well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like and a comment in the description also leave a comment if you have some critique points if you hated the video please tell me why i will work on it and i hope to see you next time